So in this video, I use one of these thermoelectric Peltier coolers, and I get the temperature from 70 degrees down, or 65 degrees down to minus 6.5 degrees. That's my best record yet. Well, hello. Today we're going to be working with my Peltier coolers again. They are thermoelectric coolers. I worked on these a couple months ago, and then kind of never really got around to working on them again. But now I finally got uh, got a hold of a good motherboard with a good heat sink and so now I can try to run these Peltier coolers and see what we can do with it with an adequate cooling system on it not counting I've never seen a purple motherboard before that's fucking awesome since my favorite color is purple that'll probably go up on the wall because it's shorted out I got like 30 motherboards I can just I used I used to have them drilled onto the wall and just as a wall full of motherboards but anyway let's get on to the Peltier coolers so for the first test, we're going to use one Peltier cooler, and I'll be using my variable DC power supply to run it. Okay, so the side with the text is what the side that gets cold, and the other side is the one where the heat transfers over to, so it gets hot. So now we will hook up the heat sink with the fan on it. I will supply the heat sink fan with the power from this lead acid battery that I recently picked up. And finally, let's add some thermal paste to the heat sink, unlike last time, so that we can connect the Feltier cooler to it. And there, the rig should be all hooked up nicely. So now that I have this entire system set up, let's run the fan just as like a benchmark test, just to see how much the fan itself drops the temperature. Right now it's 67.5 degrees. Well, that doesn't really seem to be having any good effect. My heater just kicked on, so the room temperature is going up a little bit. So now let's turn up the voltage to, oh, I'd say 3 volts or so. Let's just do one volt right now and see how low it goes from 68.4. So the temperature settles down to 59 degrees about. So now let's bring the voltage up to 2 volts. It's pulling 440 or 420 milliamps now. 2 volts brings the temperature down to 52.4 and I changed the configuration so it's not blocked by that heat sink underneath. So now it has more airflow. Now let's bring the voltage up to 3 volts. And see where it goes from there. 3 volts has taken it down to 43.4 and it still is dropping a little bit slowly. So I built this little insulator because it seems like right now a lot of the uh, the ambient room temperature is causing trouble with, with it. So let's add that and add a little weight on the top and see how that does. Well, it seems that the insulation itself drop, uh, dropped the temperature by 7 degrees. That's pretty awesome. Let's bring it up to 4 volts. Alright. At 4 volts, it dropped the temperature down to 28.3 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's go to 5 volts. That got us down to 21 degrees, so let's go to 6 volts. Six volts brought us down to 16.2 volts. Let's try seven volts. Seven volts stopped at exactly 13 degrees, so I hope to at least get down to five degrees Fahrenheit. Let's try to 8. Now the thing is, this heatsink is rated for a 95 watt CPU, so it should be plenty of power to suck it out. It just depends on the transfer rate and also the insulation. 
it looks like 8 will settle down to like 10, maybe 10.4 or 2 or something like that. So let's just jump up to 12. And see how low that'll go. I think it's reached the transfer maximum uh, uh, the maximum transfer rate because now it's starting to go back up as the heat is piling up inside of there. So let's bring the voltage down to 10 volts. See now the voltage is going up because it's it was heating up. Let's go to 9. We haven't tried that one yet. And just see if perhaps putting less energy into it creates less heat so that it can actually pull more heat out of it. So lowering the voltage does lower, uh, did lower the temperature because there was less energy going into it heating the entire system. So now let's bring the voltage down to 8.5 and see if that has any effect. Now if that low, if that, if that makes the temperature go higher, then I'll try 9.5. Hmm. Don't know. Well, it looks like I am I am below the line still of when it starts heating it more than it is cooling it. So, because lowering it to 8.5 raised the voltage, uh, raised the temperature to 9.5. So let's bring the temperature up to 9.5 or 9.4 and see how that does. So 9.4 brought it, brought it down to 8.1, so let's go to 9.6. That seems to have no effect, so we might be right on the line towards stopping cooling and, more, and having more heating. So let's go to 9.8. Once again, no effect, so let's try 10. Well, that started to bring the temperature up, so it seems that, like, 9.5 is the sweet spot, at least for this configuration. So I have to say 8.8 .8 or whatever was a, it was a, an okay temperature. It's, it's better than the one I had before. Oh. It's frozen on there. You can see the lines in the ice that I'm making. It hasn't put more ice on there, or water on there. It's shielding it more, so that's pretty interesting. Whoa, look at that. I, I'm adding water to it, building it up. Just, I was going to do that just for, to, in, to end the video with like a big ice ball in there, but that's acting as a very good insulator. Wow, two degrees. Holy cow. I'm going to add some more water. <laughs> it just hit zero. <gasps> Look at that. Minus 0 0.5. Awesome! I love this. Let's add some more. Well, with all that ice in there, it's up to the insulation, so now it's reading minus 4.7. So there you have it, minus 6.5. That's the best I've ever gotten out of one Peltier cooler. That's, oh, I'd say like maybe 75 degrees or so. 75 degrees difference. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you learned something too. Thanks for watching. See ya.